fourth next to her. It's funny though, Matt, you know, as we focus on some of the players that are actually in this game, one guy yesterday that intrigued me was Amina Brima, you know, um, for the San Antonio Spurs. And that, again, another long body, very active defensively, uh, and, and a rim protector, and he liked to challenge shots. And, you know, for the Phoenix Suns, you got Mikhail Bridges, uh, their first round pick who was taken 10th overall and then moved over to Phoenix uh, in, in a trade with Philadelphia as we see him put up his first shot. Not the most positive first shot, <laughs> but, uh, you know, we'll look to see how he develops here, probably being a featured player. And Prima had six blocks here yesterday against Milwaukee in the loss to the Bucks. Ian Mitchell Robinson, who we just saw in our last game, each had six blocks yesterday. Robinson followed up with five today. So we'll see if Brimer can match him as Dragon Bender knocks down the three. Bender in his third summer league now. After averaging six and a half points per game last year in his second year in the league. You know, three years may sound like a long time, but you have to remember his first summer league, he was 18 years old. Yeah, he was the youngest player in the draft yeah. that year. So he's still in that stage where he's developing. I do like the fact his body bender, that is, his body's changed a little bit, gotten a little bit bigger. He seemed awful thin coming in, uh, you know, that first that first year. Missed there by Jack Cooley, and you may have heard the reaction from the crowd. He is a, a favorite here in Las Vegas, and today ties a Vegas Summer League record. We'll share with you in a few moments just by appearing on the floor today. I cannot wait to hear what that record is. Well, you don't have to wait long because he tied Deontay Christmas by playing in his 32nd Vegas Summer League game. He's been here six years in a row now. And Jack Cooley making a little history here. They were chanting MVP for him here in the building the other day as he was at the free throw line. Can I make a suggestion? Sure. I think Las Vegas ought to give Mr. Cooley the key to the city. Oh, that would be. And you know they've got a cool key, right? Yeah, like a, definitely. Like a bunch of jewels on it, gilded. Here's Cooley, or there's Bender, excuse me, for three. He is a stretch five. Dragon Bender, that's a big part of his game moving forward. And Cooley. As Bryman gets the dunk, who seems to see this distinction as a badge of honor and a privilege. He said, look, he paid a lot of money to come hang out in really nice hotels and play basketball. Hey, did he really say that? It's not a, not a bad deal, really. <laughs> you eat well, <laughs> stay in five-star hotels. <laughs> That's a classic. Welcome back, Mr. Cooley. He's a summer league staple. He has played 23 NBA games over his career, including seven last season with the Sacramento Kings. Really good player for years out of Notre Dame, just a, a little undersized for a power forward and, and maybe not a perfect fit in today's NBA. Rugged player, set a G League record with 29 rebounds in a game back in 2015. 29. It's interesting. It's a yeah. lot of boards. Can he make a shot? He can make a rebound. <laughs> shot 48% last season in his limited time with Sacramento. He can make nearly half his shots. Well, we'll see how he does here against Mr. Brima. He's a big body. He's not, not the long body of Grima. Shaquille Harrison knocks it down. Been a good assist man here for the Suns, averaging six and a half so far. He actually leads the team in, in assists, but you know, Shaquille Harrison played in uh, 23 games for the Suns last year. He averaged six points. And 2.7 rebounds, two, almost two and a half assists. So he has some experience that maybe some other guys in this game don't. Trey McKinney Jones fouled on his way to the rim by Cooley.
Kenny Jones, 27, will turn 28 next month out of Miami. 36 games last year in the G League with Fort Wayne, averaging 12 a game. Another one of the journeymen you see in multiple summer leagues. Trying to find his spot. Devon Reed kicks it out. It'll get to Bender. Bender puts it on the floor that time and threw it away. London Ferrantes handles excellent college player out of Virginia. Played on a two-way deal with the Cavaliers last season. Shot off the back rim by Raphael Putney. And back the other way. Who was that man again? <laughs> Rima. It's Rima at, at both ends, and that's what you want. Out of your seven footer, a shot block on one end and running the floor and beating everybody down the other way for a dunk. We talked about him at the front end. That's, that's his game. Amita, Amita Rima. Rima. Take it home, big fella. They say that great teams are built on teamwork, unity, and camaraderie. They say that great teams succeed when everyone's voice is heard, when everyone's included. You laugh together, you build together, you lift each other up. They say it takes a lot of hard work to be a great team. So we say, let's get to it. Here's a three by Oladipo, oh, he hit it! This is where it all started for me. Um, I love it, I love the fans here. They have our support, we have their support. That helps us out so much, because we all have the same goal in mind. Vegas, you need to pack two different types of outfits. Something to show your balling and something to play balling. Watch the next wave of NBA stars strut their stuff in Vegas. I want to leave my mark on Las Vegas Summer League. I'll always perform better when the lights are brighter. I just want to leave my impact. The fans will walk away thinking he's going to be the new face of the NBA. Watch them ball in the MGM Resort NBA Summer League 2018. Coverage continues on NBA TV. Welcome back to Las Vegas and the consolation game between the Phoenix Suns and San Antonio Spurs. And where yesterday, Lonnie Walker left in the final minutes of the fourth quarter in a matchup with Milwaukee with a right ankle injury. Even though he was able to put weight on it and walk back to the locker room, he would not return to the game. I spoke with a member of the Spurs staff. He told me that Lonnie was evaluated by their trainers, and it's a grade one sprain. Now, we're not going to see him play anymore in Vegas, guys, but this is not an injury that's going to affect him long term. I also spoke with Lonnie prior to the game, and he told me that he would tell me otherwise, but smiled and said he's feeling fine. Well, Kristen, we hope that uh, Lonnie uh, Walker does heal quickly. Um, he's had a pretty solid summer league and terrific talent for the Spurs in many years to come. So, 18th overall pick, Lonnie Walker, the fourth. See Drew Eubanks into the game wearing number 25. Can't connect there. There's Putney defending. Another long defender comes in for Brima. Rafael Putney. Same sort of physical profile. Long, lean defender. Not as tall, 6'10. But quick to intercept that pass. Yeah, good anticipation by Putney. Got to see him use his length a little bit. Bront is trying to reward him. And he'll try the three. It's off the mark. 
Back come the Phoenix Suns. Nice move, nice jump hook there. By Tayo Diasi. Maverick Rowan tees up a three, won't go. Dog and Bender moving without the ball, and an easy two for Bender. Bender with five points now. Suns up 7-5. First quarter on a Friday in Vegas. This summer, the action continues with your NBA League Pass subscription. Get out! Meet the stars of tomorrow. Stay up with the stars of today at the Africa game. That was a thing of beauty. And during off-season workouts. And relive some of the league's best moments. Oh, blocked by James! Ray Allen in the corner! All included with your subscription. 81-point game! Stay in the game all summer long with NBA League Pass. I love the WNBA. This is gorgeous. They're huge talents. I learned a little bit from them as well. It's good! Nick Agumake puts it on! They make the game extremely exciting to watch. Why do I watch them work? You have got to be kidding me. Two words. Sick handles. Mad skills. Spectacular. Candace Parker. Della Don. Sue Bird. And Diane Ross. Maya Moore. You have a fan of me because you are the best at what you do. Vegas 7-5 Suns on top of the Spurs Mark Jackson taking in the action mama there goes that man there goes that man <laughs> <laughs> part of the NBA Finals broadcast crew spoke to Mike Green earlier this week Mark's here I think Jeff Van Gundy was here I've not seen him but I've heard of it JBG sighting Olivier Hamlin has it, wearing number seven in black for the Spurs. This is Eubanks. Ledbetter with the floater. Wouldn't fall. Back come. Well, I like the ball moving the there, Matt, by the Spurs. You know, the result wasn't what they wanted, but coming out of a timeout, that's the type of movement that you want to have. George King, their second round pick of the Suns, wearing number eight. And those goggles has it. Challenging Eubanks. Won't go. King hit the deck. Seeing his first action here this afternoon. George King's got limited time here in Vegas. Four points a game. Has shot seven of 11 coming in. Second round pick out of Colorado. And he has signed a two-way deal with the Suns already. Here's Bender. Not been very close on those three-pointers so far. Yeah, not at all. Any running down the floor he looked like he's grabbing his right hamstring so I don't know if he's tweaked something or Maverick Rowan knocks down the three in the corner out of North Carolina State there's Mikel Bridges wear number 25 also on the floor now for Phoenix King will try the jumper You know, Mikel Bridges, you know, Matt, is going to be an interesting player for the, the Suns in terms of what they expect from him. He's basically a system-type player. So in an environment like this, he may not show well until he's had times and repetitions with, you know, an entire team. Um, the guy that projects is a very good defender. Three-point shooter. Uh, excuse me, Stu. Raphael Putney just shed himself a dragon bender. <laughs> made the jumper they're buzzing here in vegas had him on skates <laughs> welcome to madison square garden down by 20 out by 20 you guys are the six men 
Here's Cantor with the slam. Madison Square Garden, the most famous arena. It's just like dream come true. Oh, Quinn slammed it down. The crowd got us into it. They stood behind us the whole game cheering. Jaron Jack throws it. Hardaway puts it up. Oh, he puts it in at the buzzer. And listen to the crowd with that crowd pleasing stuff. Here, in this league, we're not okay with strong. We go stronger. We don't settle for fast. Let's go fast. We go faster. We don't want next. We want next level. Here, we go all out. Because we're all in. This is our league. And here, we don't go for good. We go for great. Leaning Together is about what we as men can do to help make our world more equal for women and girls. All right, here we go, here we go. We need to mentor, hire, and promote women at work. This is what we're supposed to do. You know, anybody in my position should do that. And we need to be true partners at home. In order for our home to be the best it can, we have to do our share. Now more than ever, it's important to support the women in our lives. Everyone benefits when we do. To learn more, go to leanintogether.org. Summer League continues tonight in Las Vegas on ESPNU and the ESPN app. Got the Timberwolves and the Nuggets coming up at 8 Eastern time. Kings and the Golden State Warriors at 10 o'clock Eastern time. And here we've got a 10-7 Spurs lead before the break. Raphael Putney shook Dragon Bender who hit the floor and knocked down a jumper to give Spurs that three-point advantage. And thinking of Bender moving forward into his third NBA season, you mentioned how young he was. He was the youngest player in the draft a couple of summers back. He is, he is a stretch four, at least that's how he projects in the NBA. And not a bad three-point shooter, about 36%. The question for me is going to be what else can Bender do at the NBA level to make himself valuable out there? Well, I know uh, you hit the nail on the head. Um, you know, he's, you know, can he rebound the basketball? Can he be a little bit of a defensive presence? I think will go a long way uh, into answering that question. Um, because yes, he can shoot the basketball. He'll continue to improve in that area. But it's the other parts of his game that need to come together along with his ability to shoot the ball that really will determine whether or not he becomes a consistent, um, you know, NBA player. Bender's going to have a seat as well as Mikel Bridges, who just hit that three pointer to tie it up at 10. Javante Green comes in for Phoenix. And De Devon Reed. Here's George King. Good spin move to get into the paint. Lost the ball. It's going to be a travel. Yeah, he got a little bit out ahead of himself there. Um, you know, a lot of it brings up the point here, Matt. You know, a lot of these young players, when they're getting some of their first NBA action, they're looking. That game seems so much faster to them. And the trick is, can you learn to apply your skills and slow the game down to yourself so that you can stay productive? Hamlin didn't wait for the screen, took it himself. It rolls off, and eventually to George King in the open floor. Alec Peters for three. Trailer three is good for Peters, and the Suns are up by three. Yeah, shot there by Peters. Uh, made 20 appearances last year for the Suns. Also spent 35 games with their G League affiliate, Northern Arizona, where he shot it at nearly 47% and 41% from three point range, which was on display in that last possession. Here's Rowan. We were talking about this yesterday, man. Is Ledbetter the oldest player this year, Summer League? Another piece of trivia for you. I, I don't know the answer to that. 30 years old. Is he the oldest? Yes, he is. At 30 You're years telling old. me he's the oldest. So yes, you're not I'm asking telling me. You. Okay. So we have Cooley in the game with the most games, and we have the oldest participant, Jeff Ledbetter. I, I have seen older Summer League players before. I wasn't certain if he would be the oldest in this year's edition. Yeah. You don't get many 30-year-olds in Summer League, but once in a while, it happens. 
just turned 30. Last match. Hamlin. And a low scoring quarter comes to an end. Just 13 13. A defensive battle, you might say. We'll hear yeah, from DeAndre so. Hayden on the other or side. Poor Judy. One of those two. That's next. When I was seven or eight, every day I would dribble around the block. As I continued to grow offensively, I didn't want to just do one thing. I wanted to be able to do everything. Stewart from three. Oh, she is on fire. That's how you bring yourself to another level. That's how you separate yourself from everybody else. Now it's time to bring the storm back to where it used to be. I'm here to work. Come to Las Vegas, you need to pack two different types of outfits. Something to show your balling and something to play balling. Watch the next wave of NBA stars strut their stuff in Vegas. I want to leave my mark in Las Vegas summer league. I've always performed better when the lights are brighter. I just want to leave my impact. The fans will walk away thinking he's going to be the new face of the NBA. Watch them ball in the MGM Resort NBA Summer League 2018. Coverage continues on NBA TV. When I was in high school, played point guard. I either shoot it, pass it, that was really it. Then when I hit this mega growth spurt, I grew seven inches in one summer. No, sir. But those ball handling skills, passing skills, all that stuff kind of helped me today. Davis comes up with it and fires it down. Anthony Davis. Thirteen all, thirty-one percent shooting for the Suns, twenty-five percent shooting for the Spurs so far. The offense is bound to get better moving forward. The Suns certainly would benefit from DeAndre Ayton, who is sitting out today, but that affords him a chance to speak with Kristen. <laughs> We're arranging our, uh, well, our feet right now. If he stands a little bit shorter, I stand a little bit taller. I look significantly taller than I am, standing next to the number one overall pick, DeAndre Ayton. Is it possible? to sum up the whirlwind that has been your life in the last month? I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a lot to take in, you know, a lot of emotions is going around, being on the floor, especially playing in front of the um, Phoenix Suns fans out here in Las Vegas. Um, you know, we just wanted to win as many games as possible and really put on the show. As you sum up your summer league stint, what is it that you've learned about making this transition to the NBA? Well, most definitely the physicality down low. Um, you know, getting offensive boards or boxing up for a rebound. It's a lot of physicality down there. And just really um, defensive end and guarding the post. Um, everybody's pretty strong on the floor. Devin Booker has signed an extension with the franchise. What are you most looking forward to about playing alongside him? I mean, just really the, having the, the best chem chemistry as possible. Um, just really knowing each other's personnel and just having fun on the court. You've talked about being a rookie of the year, an all-star out of the gate. Where is this confidence stemming from so early on? I mean, that's the type of expectations I keep for myself. Um, that's some of the uh, goals I keep for myself uh, coming in. I mean, just going throughout my career. And uh, I mean, the, um, you know, the greatest guy, greatest players do it. Um, you know, they keep that type of standards for themselves. Uh, they just keep themselves accountable. And if you were to define success for the Suns this season, how would you define it? As win as many games as possible. Um, you know, last year we, you know, we um, didn't win as didn't win as many games as they wanted to. But you know, um, I think you know we have this, the team. Uh, we have the you know we have as much veterans on the team and the experience on the team to really, really go out there and win as many games. Congratulations. Thanks for stepping down on the mm. story. You, you, not many people make me look short. I'm not going to lie to you. We are so looking forward to your NBA debut. Congrats. We'll see you soon. Appreciate you. Thank you. Guys. Kristen has good size for a sideline reporter. And as you know, you can't teach size. Yeah, no, you can't. And, uh, you know, young man had a very good summer. Uh, I think gave the fans, as he said, a taste of what's to come in Phoenix. And uh, seems very humble. Uh, willingness to learn a lot and uh, we look forward to many years with DeAndre Adrian. I mean, I mean, listen, I mean, those numbers speak for themselves. You know, he averaged the double-double here in the Summer League, which is what you would expect from your first-round pick. Now, he did say that he and Devin Booker are 
going to be the new Shaq and Kobe. So I don't know about the humility part, but well, he's yeah. a confident young man. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I think early on in his NBA season, he'll understand the work that Shaquille O'Neal actually put in to become the player that he did. I mean, listen, he's going to struggle at first. I mean, uh, without question, as many of these first round picks will be. But you can't be a great player unless you've got great confidence in your ability. And there's nothing wrong with, uh, you know, DeAndre, DeAndre Ayton's uh, dream to be Shaquille O'Neal. Lots to be confident about with his size, his mobility, his skill set. It's interesting he did not take a three here in Las Vegas because that was part of the buildup of DeAndre Ayton and his ability to shoot it a little bit, 34% uh, in the college three last season. Well, we talked about this a little bit earlier. I do think we'll eventually see him take and make three-point shots at this level. He's got a beautiful looking stroke. Ayton does. Reed with the jumper there for Phoenix. Ayton was a first-team All-American, and I don't feel like there was much doubt, certainly not within the Phoenix organization, but really among among scouts and observers and, and folks who evaluate prospects about who the number one pick was going to be and who it should be, it's pretty much consensus that DeAndre Ayton is going to be that guy. Yeah, no question. Did it? Alec Peters with another made three. The offense is picked up here, and it's Phoenix by five. This summer, the action continues with your NBA League Pass subscription. Get out! Meet the stars of tomorrow. Stay up with the stars of today at the Africa game. That was a thing of beauty. And during off-season workouts. And relive some of the league's best moments. Oh, blocked by James! Ray Allen in the corner! All included with your subscription. 81-point game! Stay in the game all summer long with NBA League Pass. I'm more of a cerebral player. My parents are both immigrants. They've always emphasized education, and that made me a better player. Elizabeth Williams, beautifully done. I like watching film. I like reading the scouting reports. I like that approach to the game. This season, I'm focusing on having more of a leadership role. I want to be the person that people can look up to. And a rejection. I'm here to work. Here, in this league, we're not okay with strong. We go stronger. We don't settle for fast. Let's go fast. We go faster. We don't want next. We want next level. Here, we go all out. Because we're all in. This is our league. And here, we don't go for good. We go for great. Well, since DeAndre Ayton will make the comparison, so will we. Ayton and Booker versus Shaq and Kobe. Ayton and Shaq, both first overall picks, both 7-1. Okay, checks out. Uh, Kobe, Devin Booker, 13th overall picks, both 6-6. Wait a minute. Boy, he may be on to something. Interesting. He may be on to something. Booker's, Except Booker's got the paycheck coming up like like Kobe. He's got that $158 million extension. But let's go further in the tail of the tape there, Matt. Oh, you want to continue? Yeah. Yeah. You're not trying to Five ruin that. They did with a production Zero. crew did good work on that. <laughs> that, was, that was it's early. Good. It's early in their careers. Yeah. They couldn't, well, couldn't have five championships. They, no. He hasn't even that. played a game yet. But that's where this comparison separates, and we hope that Booker Ayton becomes a Kobe Shaq comparison. Well, of course, down yeah. The road. The Suns would love to have a three-peat at some point along the way. They'd love to have one out of those two. And an 81-point game by Booker. He's already... He's got a 70. He's got a 70. Yeah. Didn't even throw that in there. And Ayton will have to learn to say, can you dig it? Big cheer for Jack Cooley. Jack. Aiden will have to learn to say what? Can you dig it? Can you dig it? <laughs> I think he should come up with his own thing. I think he will too. He's got a great personality. And, and not that that's the determining factor when you're bringing in a number one overall pick. It doesn't hurt. 
Have no. a guy who is not camera shy, who is that confident, enjoys himself. There's a little Joel Embiid in DeAndre Ayton's personality. Well, uh, Joel, Joel Embiid does not like the DeAndre Ayton comparisons, evidenced by his uh, messaging on uh, social media. That's so. okay. He doesn't have to. <laughs> Joel lets you know how he feels. Well, you know, the social media aspect, it's really changed the game, don't you think? Or the entertainment I mean, the around game, the it's, game. It's certainly made executives nervous. I know that. It's something they have to monitor now. Is what our guy's saying now. Is it, uh, is, did they say something just fun? Did they say something that's going to cause a problem? You know, it, it, it's it is interesting. interesting. I mean, it's affected, though, I think, player psyche. And I'm not so sure that, you know, with young players, the best advice is to go the LeBron route and stay away from it for periods of time during yeah. the regular season. I mean, even at the collegiate level now, coaches will tell you that young players after games will go, the first place they go is they go check to see how they did Absolutely. on social media yeah. rather than an evaluation from the coach. In other words, the social media court of public opinion becomes more important than actually how you play. It's amazing. It's amazing, it's amazing what's happening. It is amazing. Well, anybody in basketball or not can drive themselves crazy if you spend too much time monitoring what other people are saying about you on social media. No matter what you do. Easy to lose focus on the thing you're trying to do. Yeah. It's also interesting the back and forth between the players on uh, all kinds of things during the season. Yeah. Reactions to big games, reactions to signings, to trades. Lots well, of reaction yesterday to the Isaiah Thomas signing, for instance. Yeah, and it's not all negative. I mean, no, I, no. I love when the players go back and forth and, you know, root for one another in their performances or acknowledge, you know, great efforts. I, I think uh, that's terrific. of support when somebody is hurt. You yeah. see it immediately. Yeah. That piece of it, I think, is terrific. Climber with a dunk, and that'll end the 10-0 Phoenix run. He was calling for that ball. Here's Peters, three of three, make it four of four. I think this is getting a little bit like instant replay with Peters. Same spot. <laughs> same spot, same stroke, same result. Eleven point lead is the largest of the game so far. And it's a Spurs turnover. As Peters was over there defensively. He will have a chance to add to it. Yeah, here you see the drive. It's a good call by the official. The defender established a legal guarding position and the offensive player went through the defender. Easy charge call. Peters was a second round pick last year by the Suns. Reed got loose and gets the layup. The unfortunate part is the Spurs are at a real crucial time in this game where we could be looking at a blowout here uh, if they don't finish the quarter strongly here. There's Putney over Peters. Rowan with the offensive board and shows the touch on the jumper from about eight feet. Igor Kokoshkov, the new Phoenix Suns head coach, working the sidelines here in Las Vegas as well, calls out a play for his young sons. Harrison to the rim. Good take there by Harrison. 
I mean, you can tell with Harrison that uh, you know he's had some NBA experience. But just his athleticism, the speed at which he plays, the force at which he plays the game is a little bit different than most players on the floor. Tommy Hamilton with the miss. He traveled after the offensive board. Phoenix pulling away here, and they lead it by 13. Leaning together is about what we as men can do to help make our world more equal for women and girls. All right, here we go, here we go. We need to mentor, hire, and promote women at work. This is what we're supposed to do. You know, anybody in my position should do that. And we need to be true partners at home. In order for our home to be the best it can, we have to do our share. Now more than ever, it's important to support the women in our lives. Everyone benefits when we do. To learn more, go to leanintogether.org. The NBA has enough seven-footers who are much stronger, so we had to come up with something new. We concentrated very much on shooting. This guy shoots the ball like no big man we've ever, ever seen. Here it is! They say that great teams are built on teamwork, unity, and camaraderie. They say that great teams succeed when everyone's voice is heard, when everyone's included. We laugh together, we build together, we lift each other up. They say it takes a lot of hard work to be a great team. So we say, let's get to it. It's easy to overlook me. Dupree, again! Being quiet makes people forget that I'm on the court. Ooh. I'm not flashy, I just get the job done. Dupree makes it look so easy. I'm just trying to lead by example, working towards making myself better. Just trying to work hard every possession on the floor. Dupree, once again! I'm demanding a lot of myself and of my teammates to take us to that next level. I'm here to work. This copyrighted broadcast of the National Basketball Association may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise distributed or used in any form without the express written consent of the NBA. Well, the Suns have pulled away here in the second quarter, and Alec Peters has had a lot to do with that. I, I checked with the Elias Sports Bureau, and 4 or 4 from 3-point range is good. Is it still a 1,000%? Yes. It's still, still considered perfect. <laughs> Well, we talked about Alex and the shots he were making, and we said it's like instant replay because three of his four shots are from the exact same spot. All from within about four feet of each other. Something the uh, Spurs may want to touch on in a huddle. Or perhaps actually defending that set. Yeah, maybe, maybe just get a guy there. <laughs> the 30-year-old Jeff Ledbetter, ponytail flying. Run the offense for the Spurs. Here's Olivier Hamlin over to Rowan. And Reed collects the rebound for Phoenix. Shaq Harrison brings it up for the Suns with just a little over 90 seconds to go here before halftime. Suns are plus 13 in this quarter. They get plus 15 in this quarter. Spurs are getting a little bit outworked here, uh, aside from getting outplayed offensively. Hamlin off the back rim, Putney chases it down. A lot of jump shots for the Spurs yeah, in the if second quarter. And if you're the Spurs, that's not the way you're going to get back in the basketball game. You're going to have to get higher quality shots. Something for them to discuss here in the final minute of the first half. Phoenix has built a 15-point lead. This summer, the action continues with your NBA League Pass subscription. Get out! Meet the stars of tomorrow. Stay up with the stars of today at the Africa game. That was a thing of beauty. And during off-season workouts. And relive some of the league's best moments. Oh, blocked 
by James! Three hours in the quarter! All included with your subscription. 81-point game! Stand the game all summer long with NBA League Pass. When you come to Las Vegas, you need to pack two different types of outfits. Something to show you're balling. And something to play balling. Watch the next wave of NBA stars strut their stuff in Vegas. I want to leave my mark on Las Vegas Summer League. I'll always perform better when the lights are brighter. I just want to leave my impact. The fans will walk away thinking he's going to be the new face of the NBA. Watch them ball in the MGM Resort NBA Summer League 2018. Coverage continues on NBA TV. Down low for Dominique. Baseline drive. Dominique. Oh, my goodness. Did you see that jam? I don't know how he did that. Dominique. That was wonderful. Kemba. Kemba. Three. Three. <laughs> Big Pat, you know, he's great just getting the crowd involved. And then when the fans are excited, then I get super excited, and we're all pulling together to get the team to win a ball game. You know, his voice gives you a will to win. Leaning Together is about what we as men can do to help make our world more equal for women and girls. All right, here we go, here we go. We need to mentor, hire, and promote women at work. This is what we're supposed to do. You know, anybody in my position should do that. And we need to be true partners at home. In order for our home to be at best it can, we have to do our share. Now more than ever, it's important to support the women in our lives. Everyone benefits when we do. To learn more, go to leanintogether.org. Back in Las Vegas, Phoenix up 37-22. They've pulled away here in the second quarter. Spurs are shooting just 27% so far. I think it's 25% now. As you look at some of the uh, notable finds for the Spurs in the second round of the NBA draft, including some guys who haven't even played for them. Dewan Blair, there's their pick. Goran Dragic, also their pick back in 2008. Yeah, and the two, the two most notable there uh, actually stick out to me are the Ginobili pick and the Dragic pick, Dragic pick because they were picked so low and be, went on to become all-star level players. Right. Under a minute to go here in the second quarter. Suns get it to George King out of the corner. That wouldn't go, but it's chased down by Shaquille Harrison. Peters from that spot again, and he shuffled the feet. Just, <laughs> Spurs finally got a defender out there. Yeah, it was Putney. Not going to let that happen again. It's funny how that happens because the defender put Peters in a position where he had to do something that perhaps he's not as good at. If he can catch and shoot, he's fine. But having to put the ball on the floor had a little bit different result. Good for the Spurs. Ledbetter lost it. Green ahead of the pack, and he'll flush it. The Spurs are just waiting for this half to end at this point. Offensive execution just hasn't been there. If this were a heavyweight boxing match, they would uh, throw in the towel here. <laughs> it's only their seventh turnover of the half. It's really just been shot selection and execution. And some Phoenix defense there. Green. Keep the closer oh, and got it. Yes, sir. Adding insult to injury for the Spurs. Javante Green took on the buzzer and he beat it to make the lead 20 here at the half. Suns plus 20 in the second quarter and plus 20 for the half. They lead it 42 22 at the break. Here in this league. We're not okay with strong. We go stronger. We don't settle for fast. Let's go fast. We go faster. We don't want next. We want next level. Here, we go all out. Because we're all in. This is our league. And here, we don't go for good. We 
go for great. I grew up in Miami with three older brothers and an older sister. They definitely pushed me towards basketball and they helped me get better. How do you stop Sylvia Fowles? I was eager to learn because I always wanted to impress. It just made me a better person. I always felt like I can do anything. That's just that drive that keeps me going. Like, how can I be better than I was last year? Denied by Sylvia Fowles. I'm here to work. Welcome back to Las Vegas and a 20 point lead for the Suns over the Spurs here at halftime. Kristen Ledlow, Mark Jackson, the NBA player, coach, analyst. So what is it that you're watching for in a summer league stint? Well, you never know. You're looking at talent, player-wise. Uh, I'm here with my two youngest kids. My daughter's actually working it. So just here enjoying the, the fantastic game that's been so good to me. And also, you're watching the coaches, the young young coaches, uh, the job they're doing on each of these staffs. Uh, so you, you, you learn a lot. Uh, even when you think nobody's watching, somebody's watching. What do you see as the transferable qualities from a summer league stint to the NBA? To me, the one thing that transfers the most is a motor, the competitive spirit, competitive drive. If you're able to do it in a gym like this, it'll transfer into the regular season and bigger moments. If you were able to give any of these young guys who are essentially in a job interview right now some advice, what would it be? The most important thing I learned because I was in that position at one point was believing in your ability, having confidence. The same thing that made you successful on a lower AAU level or a high school level or a college level is the same thing that will make you successful uh, on this level. Remain confident, put the time in, and, and things work out. Kevin Knox will very likely be in the Rookie of the Year conversation this coming season. If he were to win, he'd be the first Nick to do so since you. What impresses you the most about his game? You, did you say you wing? No. <laughs> well. I'm here all week. Uh, no, no pun intended. You, you, you set the comedic bar so high, Coach. I will tell you this. It, it'd be a heck of an accomplishment. He's an outstanding young talent. The Knicks hit a home run as far as that pick is concerned. In my opinion, with all due respect, he wasn't the ninth best player or whatever pick they had. He's better than guys that went ahead of him. Uh, he's a, he's a, a big-time talent that can score right away, and uh, the, the New York City fans are going to love him. It's difficult to analyze the talent before we see them actually step onto an NBA floor, but is there any other rookie that stands out to you as that guy could be the rookie of the year? I think I think you look across the board, there's been guys that have impacted the game. You look at uh, Colin Saxon, you look at Trey Young, their, their ability to make plays and score, uh, their ability to to, they're going to play on teams that they're going to have opportunities early on in this season to play. That's that's important also. And you look at Carter from the Bulls, the impact he's had. A big live body, uh, Aiden for Phoenix. It's, it's absolutely wide open. Uh, it's going to be a fun class to watch all year long. Thank you so much for taking the time. I have learned so much from you for so many years, and I am so thankful. The check's in the mail. Thank you. <laughs> we'll go ahead and leave it at that. Mark Jackson, I'm Kristen Ledger. We'll be back with the third quarter here in Las Vegas next. This summer, the action continues with your NBA League Pass subscription. Get out! Meet the stars of tomorrow. Stay up with the stars of today at the Africa game. That was a thing of beauty. And during off-season workouts. And relive some of the league's best moments. Oh, blocked by James! Three out in the corner! All included with your subscription. 81-point game! Stay in the game all summer long with NBA League Pass. When I started, it was 2012, and I was just an intern. It's really cool to see the team grow in such a short period of time. I'm not calling plays off the bench and I'm not running the team, but there's a reason they call it home court advantage. 
We get the fans ready, and then the fans get the players ready. Leaning Together is about what we as men can do to help make our world more equal for women and girls. All right, here we go, here we go. We need to mentor, hire, and promote women at work. This is what we're supposed to do. You know, anybody in my position should do that. And we need to be true partners at home. In order for our home to be the best it can, we have to do our share. Now more than ever, it's important to support the women in our lives. Everyone benefits when we do. To learn more, go to leanintogether.org. Welcome back to the MGM Resorts NBA Summer League. All Suns in the second quarter as they outscored San Antonio 29-9 to to take a 20-point halftime lead. Ready to start the third here from Las Vegas on Friday the 13th. Matt Weiner, Stu Jackson, Kristen Ludlow. Stu, are you, uh, are you a superstitious guy? Do you worry about such things Friday the 13th? Uh, I, I, no, I don't. I, I, I don't need that uh, that kind of noise and uncertainty in my life. So you're saying it bothers you a little bit, just enough to think about. It. Yeah, and and this game hasn't helped. I mean, <laughs> we were very unlucky here with a 20-point blowout so far, and I, I'm starting to you know feel like the 13th had something to do with it. And I know Kristen doesn't like the 13th. To quote Michael Scott, I'm not superstitious, but I am a little stitious. A little stitious. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> well, 24 was you come, up, you come up with that on your own. <laughs> <laughs> I, again, I set the comedic bar so high. Join me, won't you? 24 was certainly an unlucky number for the Spurs in the first half. That was their shooting percentage. 24.3 to be exact. 9 of 37 from the field. And we, we touched on it before halftime. A lot of jump shots and a lot of misses. Well, let's put this in perspective. Not only did they shoot 24% from the field to the Suns 50, they shot 21% from the three-point line. The, Spurs, the Suns shot 50. They got out-rebounded 24 to 15. There's nothing good going on in this game for the Spurs right now. <laughs> There's opportunity. There is that. They have that moving forward. You know, in their defense, though, Matt, I mean, listen, they, they've lost some key players. Um, they were shorthanded yes, in yesterday's game. Um, you know, there's no Derek White. There's no Lonnie Walker. There's no Chemis Metu. Metu. Chemezi Metu. Chemezi Metu. Uh, and today, Jerron Blossom game, who is playing isn't having one of his better games, so uh, it's been a tough goal. Well, they've also spread out the minutes here, so Blossing game, who's who's been very good for them, only played 10 minutes in the first half. He is starting here in the third quarter. See if he can get it going, but he only took three shots in that first half. The Spurs played 12 players in the first half, as opposed to the nine that the Suns deployed. Shaq Harrison reverses course back the other way. Cooley can't finish it. It's a shot clock violation. That ball did not touch the rim. I'll tell you, Shaq Harrison, that was a heck of a play as the shot clock was winding down. Unfortunately, Cooley mishandled it. Couldn't get a good shot off. See, Blossing game, who's averaged 15 a game here and shot the ball exceptionally well. Just hasn't really gotten into an offensive flow here. And part of that is, again, the Spurs are shuffling players in and out here. Yeah. Not much of any, well, really no continuity in this game for them. I liked Blossom game coming out of Clemson. You know, the interesting thing about him, he ended up staying um, for an extra season at Clemson. But had he come out in the draft the year prior to that, he probably would have been a late first round, early second right. round pick. And, to much to everybody's surprise, he went back to school um, and then ended up uh, becoming the 59th pick overall the following year. And that was Blossom game rattling in the jump shot, so maybe he'll get something going here offensively. And you see that from well, time to time. That was the case probably with Grayson Allen. 
It was picked by Utah in the 20s in this year's draft. Two years ago, probably would have been a lottery pick. Yeah, no. You know, it, you, know you, you, you don't know whether it's because the, the class that they end up entering in the draft gets better. Right. Or does it give NBA types and scouts around the league an opportunity to pick apart your game? The evaluation and, changes, yeah. Yeah, and, and your evaluation changes. I don't know the answer to that, but um, I guess it's a lesson in you got to enter the draft while the iron's hot. Peters is off of the three. Cooling work on the boards there, but he's... There's a loose ball, loose ball foul, and now a technical foul on London Perantes. So Peters will go to the free throw line. You hear often about players who have come to the NBA and not succeeded. Well, he came out too early. Sometimes he came out at just the right time to cash in on his potential and just wasn't good enough to play in the NBA. Yeah. And, and you know, sometimes it, that's the argument for coming out sooner rather than later. It's an interesting argument too, Matt, you know, this notion of coming out too early because on one hand, I think some players do benefit from that extra year of emotional and physical maturity when they're in college. But the flip side is, and it does cut both ways, is that the sooner you come into the NBA, you're able to more concentrate on your skill development right. without you know, going to class and doing those types of things and playing in an NBA system. And it's a hard one to sort of figure out. And I think it's just an individual uh, decision and situation for each player uh, as to what the right decision is. And you know, it, it varies. And, and sometimes there are players who have athletic potential, but uh, as you alluded to, are exposed the longer they play basketball. So at the college level, a second or third year is not beneficial in terms of their draft prospects. A little better offense from the Spurs there, but Phoenix had the defensive answer, and Harrison pushes back the other way. Mikhail Bridges off on the corner three. Take another timeout. Spurs can cut into the lead a little bit, but some work to do here down by 17. Here, in this league, we're not okay with strong. We go stronger. We don't settle for fast. Let's go fast. We go faster. We don't want next. We want next level. Here, we go all out. Because we're all in. This is our league. And here, we don't go for good. We go for great. It's important for me to give back to the community because I'm helping change somebody's life. I always feel like when you focus on more people outside of yourself, life just feels a little bigger. The best way to give back is by your actions. Now that I'm a professional athlete and I know the impact that I can have on youth, the things that I can do to help out a community, I feel like is really important. When you come to Las Vegas, you need to pack two different types of outfits. Something to show your balling and something to play balling. Watch the next wave of NBA stars strut their stuff in Vegas. I want to leave my mark in Las Vegas summer league. I'll always perform better when the lights are brighter. I just want to leave my impact. The fans will walk away thinking he's going to be the new face of the NBA. Watch them ball in the MGM Resort NBA Summer League 2018. Coverage continues on NBA TV. Back in Las Vegas as you take a look at the number one overall pick, DeAndre Ayton. A uh, one-and-done guy out of Arizona, and of course that is the trend these days. The last nine number one picks have been one-and-done guys. In fact, 22 of the last 27 top three picks have been one-and-done players. And eight of the first ten in this year's draft were all one year in college and off to the NBA players. 
New Phoenix Union. led by 20 at the half. It's 17 now. You know, following up on that, Matt, you know, it's interesting. The, the NBA draft for many years now has been upside down on its head. Uh, you know, you, you look at this year's draft and you've got nine of the first 11 players taken that are one and done players. And the 10th player was Luka Doncic, who's right. 19 years old. Uh, but it's become a draft that is based upon speculation and upside. And oftentimes that you can actually find players that are a little bit more ready, sometimes more productive earlier on, later in the first round, early in the second round. Um, so it, it's, it's just an interesting dilemma that's uh, taking place in the league. And by the way, one of those two picks is in this game, Mikel Bridges, one of those two non-one-and-done guys. Mikel Bridges, 10th overall pick after a full career at Villanova, including a pair of national championships. Another turnover by the Spurs. Numbers for Phoenix, but a botched fast break. That did not, did not go the Suns' way. <laughs> there was a lot wrong with that fast break. There was a lot going on there, Matt. I mean, we have flying passes in the air and passes from out of bounds into the corner. There's a lot happening. Very little of it was, was positive for the Suns. more decisive sets from the Spurs here in the third quarter trying to generate some offense well yeah and if you're the Spurs coaching staff your objective right now is to make sure that you finish this game quote unquote the right way in terms of trying to run good offense play unselfishly play hard because these players are not out here just only to make the Suns team we mentioned a little bit earlier they're out here showcasing themselves for you know, a lot of scouts from around the globe, and it's important that they play well, play hard, and play the right way. It's Jordan Green to the free throw line. Played 34 games with the Austin Spurs last season. Averaged four a game. Undrafted after a full four-year career at Texas A&M. He is Danny Green's cousin. Danny Green, the longtime Spur. A lot of fans forget, you know, Danny Green had his own struggles very early, early in That's his right. NBA career. That's right. He was a uh, bit of a journeyman before he landed in San Antonio. I believe he was even waved twice. Yeah, he was. Cleveland. I'm forgetting his other stop. And then wound up being a 3 and D guy who went crazy in the NBA Finals from the three-point line. You have the Harrison drive. Terrific block there. It's Emile Jefferson with the block. Corey Jefferson, excuse me. Corey Jefferson has 58 games NBA experience under his belt. With Brooklyn and with the Phoenix Suns. Pilantas into traffic. Puts it up high for Jefferson. Tried to sort of tip that ball up there. Kenny Jones in the open floor to Green. And did he step out of bounds? He did. Boy, for coaches, there's nothing that drives you crazier than a player not being aware, aware of floor spacing and where he is on the floor. Hey, be sure to download the NBA app to keep up with all things Summer League. You can get your highlights, your scores, <laughs> schedules with the click of a button to stay in the know with NBA Summer League. Are you chuckling at me? No, I was okay. not. There was someone in my ear. Someone? <laughs> yes, our producer, who unfortunately made me chuckle. Ah. Here's Green, who had that buzzer beater just before the half. Comes up empty on that trip. Perantes. Shakes himself free and knocks down the deep two. 
Very strong move, step back by Perantis. First bucket of the afternoon for London Perantis out of Virginia. Two-way player last season with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Here's King with a floater. George King knocks it down. All right, King. Was that his first bucket? First King, first bucket for King. First bucket in the NBA there. Well, I guess he's played previously, but this he is, is his played, second yeah. game. Yeah. 19-point contest here next door. Two-point game late in the fourth quarter. The Mavericks hanging on to a two-point lead over the Washington Wizards with three minutes to change, or three minutes and change. It's happening on ESPNU. Perlantis ignored the pick from Brima, gets another one from Drew Eubanks. Probing, and a pretty lefty finish from London Perantis. Beautiful move to set up the left-hand finish. Green steps in defensively, couldn't keep it in bounds. Perantis played 14 games with the Cavaliers, obviously a, a championship contender. Not a lot of minutes available for him last season. Played another 35 games with the Cavaliers G League affiliate in Canton. Brothers has always been a low turnover guy, man. You know, you know, he has a good ability to run a club, doesn't turn it over, gets the team in the offense, can make an open shot. Really good college career at Virginia. Where they value the basketball and where turnovers are frowned upon. Chris Jenkins was trying to get it to Eubanks, cutting, and it's a foul. And a side out with 14 on the shot clock. Chris Jenkins will inbound, the hero from Villanova's national championship a couple of years back. Ledbetter uses his strength on that drive. This occurred to me, all three players involved in that game-winning shot at Villanova, Ryan Archidiakono, Daniel Oshefu, uh -huh. and Chris Jenkins, all here at the Las Vegas Summer League. Yes, I've seen all three play in person. Yeah. We saw Archie Diakono and Jalen Brunson guarding each other here a day or two ago, as they must have done in practice over and over again. Many times. Drew Eubanks to the left hand, and it falls for Eubanks out of Oregon State. Nice little lefty scoop shot. Odiasi over the left shoulder. And Brian let out. Let him get that good post position. Oh, uh, then a make by Maverick Rowe, and he's fouled on the shot. Much needed offense for the San Antonio Spurs, and a chance to add to it when we come back. It's like that edge about Brooklyn. Kind of love being around it. Brooklyn, we have the grit. Dinwiddie finds the open man. Oh, we got a different kind of pride, man. Grab, cut X, Jared Allen, D9. If you rocking with us, you family. Just know that. We all in this together, baby. They say that great teams are built on teamwork, unity, and camaraderie. They say that great teams succeed when everyone's voice is heard, when everyone's included. We laugh together, build together, 
We lift each other up. They say it takes a lot of hard work to be a great team. So we say, let's get to it. Leaning Together is about what we as men can do to help make our world more equal for women and girls. All right, here we go, here we go. We need to mentor, hire, and promote women at work. This is what we're supposed to do. You know, anybody in my position should do that. And we need to be true partners at home. In order for our home to be the best it can, we have to do our share. Now more than ever, it's important to support the women in our lives. Everyone benefits when we do. To learn more, go to leanintogether.org. Summer League continues tonight in Las Vegas on NBA TV and the ESPN app. Mo Bamba's Orlando Magic and the Oklahoma City Thunder. Trey Young's Atlanta Hawks and the LA Clippers also ahead. Mikael Bridges has just walked off the floor a moment ago. Take a look at Mo Bamba. Uh, see if we can find out what's happening with Bridges. He was, uh, appeared to have a bit of a limp. See left the floor. Obama must just like to see a good basketball, huh? Why not? He's a fan. Bridges one of four for five points in this game. And hopefully it's nothing. At least nothing significant. Much better ball movement and player movement in this third quarter for the Spurs. That's how they've been able to cut into this lead at least a little bit was 20 at the half, and now 14. Here's Reed. That kind of takes the wind out of your sails, though. You've cut the lead back, back to 14, and have a fairly good defensive possession. That's nine points now for Reed. Jenkins looking for Blyma inside. That's picked off. Good defense. Hugh Harrison got there, and he's fouled in the open floor. You know, just sitting here watching it, the X factor in this game really is Shaquille Harrison. I mean, we mentioned it earlier. He's playing at a little bit different level um, than a lot of the guys on the floor, and, and particularly he has shown defensively to be really disruptive. So every time the Spurs try to get a run, run some good offense, it seems like Harrison makes an athletic play to, to end, the, end the possession. 7, 5 rebounds, and 6 assists so far for Harrison. And, Stu, you, you just see the difference between the guys with NBA experience and the guys who are seeing all this for the first time. It just it just shows up on the floor. It, it, it really does. And, that you know, that but that's why a guy like Harrison has played as many games already in his early career. Uh, you know, 23 games last year with the Suns, another 36 in the G League. It's just a little bit more experience with these guys. But I'll tell you what, I like his promise just simply because of, of his athletic ability. He's big, strong guard. He's 6'4", 190 pounds. Pretty good size for a point guard. He may have a future, if not with Phoenix, with somebody else. You also see the, the, the veteran guys who come over from Europe who are 25, 26, who know their games. It's interesting to see how they, they play in these summer league games. I think, well, I think that's one of the reasons why everyone's so high on Luka Doncic. You know, right. although he's a young player, he's played against more experienced players, older players, and been and successful. And he's been a pro for four seasons in Real Madrid at the age of 19. It is one advantage that the uh, European players have over the U.S. guys is that is their job. Yeah. I mean, Ricky Rubio was a pro, I believe, at 14, yeah. if I recall. And in Doncic's case, you're talking about him playing against grown men when he was 16 years of age. And doing nothing but playing ball. Yeah, and I know Dantage is only one player, but it really begs the question about our own um, youth skill development in this country, you know, as opposed to the European model and the club system. The club system, right? You know, where 
You play less games at an earlier age. You spend more time in practice, and you're playing competitively against older players. Right. I mean, there's something right. to be said for that. But Adam Silver has talked about that as you take a look at what some of what Doncic can do. I think he's going to be a terrific player in our league. Uh, you know, in, in an odd kind of way, I think he is a perfect fit for Dennis Smith hmm. with the Mavs. Um, you know, Dennis Smith, a little bit, obviously, a lot smaller. Yep. Explosive. Right. Uh, a, a scoring point guard. Mm -hmm. But now the Mavs, going forward, will have the ability to put the ball in Dottage's hand and run the basketball team. I'm not saying right away, but eventually. Right. Sure. And allow Dennis Smith to play a little bit off the ball where he can utilize that scoring ability. I, I think, and, and plus defensively, Dantich can guard bigger guards. Right. Smith can guard smaller point guards. I, I think in a strange kind of way, it may work. That is going to be a question for Dantich, of course, at the NBA level, is who does he guard and how effectively does he guard? He's going to be guarding wings, you would think, twos and threes. Peters running the break. He gets it back and flushes it home. And that's a good looking fast break for the Phoenix Suns. That's a good looking fast break. And you talk about decisions. Harris, you know, passes up the layup for a better shot. An uncontested one by Peters. Good finish for Phoenix. They wrap up the quarter with a 13 0 run. And that Spurs momentum midway through the quarter is a thing of the past. Peters with the finish, a 24 point lead through three. There are two constants in my life, basketball and my family. Deladon's got to bail him out. Playing with the Mystics has brought me closer to home and closer to my sister, Lizzie. Spending time with her really helps my focus, and that helps my game. Blocked by Deladon, kept it alive. I feel like I can now compete at the highest level and be me. Deladon going to fire away. I'm here to work. He from Memphis. Yeah, but where's he really from? Man, I just told you he from Memphis. When I first came here from Barcelona when I was 16, I spent my junior and senior year of high school here. This is a strong working city, and we are a strong working team. This is for the win! <laughs> when you play for your city, it's going to take you to a different level. Suns win that quarter as well, 23-19, and they are dominating now with their biggest lead of the game. It's 24. Good to have you with us here on a Friday afternoon from Las Vegas. Along with Kristen Ludlow and Stu Jackson, I'm Matt Weiner. All Suns since the second quarter. Rafael Putney got to the rim, couldn't finish, and it's Prima with the putback from San Antonio. Yeah. And the Spurs, I mean, on the positive side, it's a big deficit here, 22 points, but they, they're, they're still giving good effort out here. It's just they're a little bit outmanned, outmatched. They don't have some of the primary players with them. Let's go over to Chris and Ludlow for an update on Mikel Bridges. Matt, I did speak with a member of the Sun staff as we saw him limp to the locker room. He told me it's a knee contusion. He won't return to this game, but it's not an injury that's expected to impact him long term. Okay, that's good news for the Suns, obviously. Keeping everybody healthy on their way back to Phoenix. Shaquille Harrison, who is plus 32 through three quarters in this game. Here's Peters. That was intercepted. Well, in watching the game, it looks like he's had a profound effect on this basketball game on both ends, offensively and especially defensively. So the data backs up what we're seeing. Hey! 
Galier Hollis Jefferson. Strong drive. And Monday's older brother is on the board with his first bucket of the afternoon. Corey Jefferson off on the three. Back comes Shaquille Harrison. Oh, that's a nice pass. Hollis Jefferson set up Reed, couldn't finish the three. There's Putney, runs into Peters, who will pick up the foul. One thing the uh, Spurs have done better here since the early part of this game is account for Peters at the top of the circle on that three. He's drawn attention after knocking down his first four. Well, what they've done, they've taken Peters a little bit out of his comfort zone. You know, he's, he, he uh, you know, rather than just making him a standstill shooter, they're making him try to do other things within the offense and, and make his life a little bit more difficult. But all that being said, Pete, you know, Peters is plus 27. Plus Harrison 27. plus 32. Cooley. Jack Cooley plus 26. Our summer league veteran. And Devon Reed plus 27. Still a two-point game next door over at Cox Pavilion with five and a half seconds to go. Dallas hanging on to a 94-92 lead. And a chance to add to it at the free throw line. Suns trying to get something going offensively here. See what they can do with a broken play. Hollis Jefferson, no. Cooley with the tip. Jack Cooley, if you weren't with us at the top of the broadcast, has tied a summer league record by appearing in his 32nd game. Sixth straight year he is here in summer league. Dallas has wrapped up that win with a 96-92 victory. Peters, that's his spot, can't connect that time. Harrison will try it. Oh, geez. Shaquille Harrison. Harrison has, in many ways, dominated this game. Likewise, the Suns all over San Antonio. This summer, the action continues with your NBA League Pass subscription. Get out! Meet the stars of tomorrow. Stay up with the stars of today at the Africa game. That was a thing of beauty. And during off-season workouts. And relive some of the league's best moments. Oh, blocked by James! Three out in the corner! All included with your subscription. 81-point game! Stay in the game all summer long with NBA League Pass. They say that great teams are built on teamwork, unity, and camaraderie. They say that great teams succeed when everyone's voice is heard, when everyone's included. You laugh together, you build together, you lift each other up. They say it takes a lot of hard work to be a great team. So we say, let's get to it. Growing up in Indiana, you knew the game of basketball. And that's what you knew. I wanted to be the best. Too easy for Skylar Diggins. Coming back from my injury was one of the biggest hurdles in my professional career. i never been without the game of basketball before, so just being out there on the floor again with my team was an accomplishment. I was really proud of that. I'm here to work. Here, in this league, we're not okay with strong. We go stronger. We don't settle for fast. Let's go fast. We go faster. We don't want next. We want next level. Here, we go all out. Because we're all in. This is our league. And here, we don't go for good. We go for great. Well, I tried to do the broadcast my way. That was Bingo Van 
Bongo, Bongo. I don't know what I was going to say, but out came Rip City. Rip City, leave that in. Became a rallying cry. Look at that madhouse out there. It's been all suns, and they've done a lot of their damage from beyond the three-point line, where they've knocked down 11 in 24 attempts. Yeah, and that, that's in direct contrast to San Antonio Spurs, who have only knocked down five in 22 attempts, and is a large part of the story in this basketball game. Back to live action here in Las Vegas. Rafael Putney with the drive. Jack Cooley collects the rebound. Knocked out of his hands, but it'll stay with the Phoenix Suns. Who since a, uh, how should we put it? Slow 13 to 13 first quarter. A uh, muddied first quarter offensively between these two teams. A lot of times what happens to these teams, though, Matt, you know, when you play this many games in a short amount of time, some days you come out and your legs just aren't there. And it takes you a quarter or two to get yourself going. Yeah. And certainly in the Suns' case. The Suns got going. Yeah. The Spurs never really have. Trey McKinney-Jones with the jumper. San Antonio is still shooting around 30% for this game. Harrison, good look to find Cooley driving to the basket, and he's fouled at the rim. It's a really well executed pass to the cutting Cooley. Yeah, it's a pinpoint pass, and the thing about Harrison that is different than a lot of the younger guards uh, or first year guards we've seen in Summer League is that, you know, He's extremely fast and plays really quick, but in situations like that, he paces and just waits for opportunities to open. That time was a nice pocket pass into Cooley that led to the foul. Part of being a good point guard is just learning to play with tempo and pace and knowing when to go fast, when to slow down. How many point guards come into the league with that understanding? Because you do see players of all positions, but more importantly with the point guards, who are just going 100 miles per hour every time they touch the ball. I think very few of them come in with that because all players at all positions, when they enter this level, the game seems so fast. And oftentimes you get point guards trying to counteract the speed of the game by going faster. When in reality, very good point guards know how to tempo the game, when to, you know, when to ex accelerate, when to decelerate in an effort to try to run their team better. So I think very few come in with it, but you have to learn it if you're going to survive in this league and actually have a coach or a franchise turn their franchise and team over to you. Foul on the Spurs, and that'll give San Antonio a chance to swap out everybody. Whole new lineup coming in for the Spurs. They really have distributed their minutes throughout the summer league here. Sometimes you'll you'll see different approaches to that by different teams. Some teams will decide to change up their starting lineups, feature certain players, and then maybe not play them at all a game. Spurs really just kind of played everybody. Rowan, with a floater on the baseline. Maverick Rowan. make the shot but green comes in and follows up and it's a 30 point lead for the suns
Foul by Green. Jack Cooley walks off after his 32nd summer league game. 10 points, 9 boards. Good afternoon. And off to the next Mr. phase Cooley. of his career, wherever it takes him. Hollis Jefferson gets the pick. I think he was going for a lob there. I think he was as well. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt, man. Just couldn't couldn't connect with Ty Odiasi. He's got better touch than that. That had to be a lob. Yeah. You know, Stu, we haven't even discussed the Kawhi Leonard situation, which hangs over everything to do with the San Antonio Spurs. Really, the, the organization is in limbo until that's resolved, one way or the other. Folks know the story by now. Leonard played just nine games last season. Quadriceps tendinopathy. A pesky injury for him to resolve. Disagreement over how it should be treated and by whom. And then reports surfaced that Leonard and his camp wanted him playing elsewhere. Greg Popovich traveled to California. Odiasi couldn't connect on the lob dunk. Greg Popovich traveled to California. Try to resolve it. We'll pick up that part of the story when we come back. Suns wrapping up an easy afternoon. Leaning Together is about what we as men can do to help make our world more equal for women and girls. All right, here we go, here we go. We need to mentor, hire, and promote women at work. This is what we're supposed to do. You know, anybody in my position should do that. And we need to be true partners at home. In order for our home to be the best it can, we have to do our share. Now more than ever, it's important to support the women in our lives. Everyone benefits when we do. To learn more, go to leanintogether.org. Welcome back, everybody, to Las Vegas. All Suns here about to wrap up a win on a Friday afternoon. We were discussing the, uh, the Kawhi Leonard situation, which hangs over the San Antonio Spurs organization. That I was saying before the break, Greg Popovich made the visit to California. They met face-to-face. -face. Uh, we haven't heard much about what was said or if anything was resolved, but what seems clear is that Leonard still is not interested in continuing his career in San Antonio, which leaves... The Spurs some interesting options in terms of what to do with him. They don't have to trade him right now. He's a free agent next summer, not this summer. Uh, but as you know, his value will fluctuate depending on where they are in the season and who's interested. So what to do if you're R.C. Buford and Greg Popovich now with your star player? Yeah, th this is a high stakes game for the San Antonio Spurs at this point because you hit it on the head. You know, if they elect to, if, if Kawhi does not want to continue with the San Antonio Spurs, the Spurs are basically left with the option of rebuilding. Right. Because any trade that takes place with Kawhi and another NBA club is going to involve getting back younger and many younger assets in a way of players and draft picks. But it puts your franchise, the Spurs that is, in a situation where you're rebuilding. And that would be sad, I think. So my own personal hope is that somehow they're able to have a meeting of the minds and repair that relationship. But if not, I don't think the Spurs have any choice but to trade him uh, before the deadline or even before the season where, they've ha where they would have a little bit more le leverage than they would at the trading deadline next February. But boy, I hope that that doesn't happen. Sure feels like from the outside, at least, that. The two sides are beyond any sort of reckoning that would keep Kawhi Leonard in San Antonio. I mean, it, it seems like that that train has left the station, I believe, and, and it's just a matter of what kind of offer they get here in the summer, or do they roll the dice and wait until the trade deadline in February when any number of teams might look and say, you know what, we're really close to making the finals in the East, perhaps, and Kawhi Leonard might put us over the top even if even if he might walk away in the summertime. 
Odiasi, as we're having this discussion, is uh, racking up dunks here on lobs. But, you know, the problem you have is the market for Kawhi Leonard is very narrow in right. terms of teams that actually have the there package of, of assets. Right. There aren't a lot. I mean, you can name them basically on one hand. Boston, Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Maybe the Lakers. Maybe the Lakers. But aside, you know, outside of those teams, I mean, where do you go? And then if you're those teams, if you're Boston or Philadelphia, and we've heard rumors that Kawhi wants to play near his hometown right. in Southern California, do you run the risk of trading for him and basically renting him for a year right. where he elects not to resign with you when he does become a free agent? I mean, these are all key questions surrounding Kawhi Leonard. The flip side being the example set by Oklahoma City, which went after Paul George without any guarantee that he might come back and wound up re-signing him, convincing him that the Thunder was the team for him. Um, but the Spurs potentially face the end of this extraordinary era in which they've reached the postseason 21 straight times. They had that long run of 50 win seasons along the way and, of course, five NBA championships. These things eventually come down to an end. Yeah. And we could be seeing the beginning of the end with the silver and black. Well, and a, tempor a temporary end. I, I mean, the Spurs. Well, the are, end of that era. Yeah, of that era. Yeah. But there's green. There's showtime punctuation no point for Javante Green. Phoenix pulled away in the second quarter and never looked back. And they win it by 35. Javante Green, the finishing touch for Phoenix. Emphatic way to end the basketball game. Green with that dunk, finished with 20 to go with five rebounds. Alec Peters, 17 points, four of seven from three-point range along the way. And Shaquille Harrison, Really controlled this game in so many ways. 13.6 rebounds and seven assists along the way. Offensively, the Spurs could just never get anything going. They shot 31% on the game, including five of 25 from three-point range. Yeah, they dominated in every facet of the game. And, um, you know, you don't want to take anything away from their victory, but even though the Suns didn't have some of their key players, neither did the San Antonio Spurs. And I just think that physically, uh, much to do with Shaquille O'Harrison wore the San Antonio Spurs club down today. Alec Peters had the feeling early on in this game. Sweet spots. It's directly in front of the rim and then two feet to the left of it because <laughs> that's where he took the majority of his three-point shots. But, you know, something he said in the interview that I think that a lot of players could learn from, and that was what he's learned in his first year is that you always have to be ready, right? And he didn't play necessarily up to his capabilities or the way that he wanted to early on. He knew he was going to get some run today and made the most of the opportunity. So if you're sitting here, you know, with the Phoenix Suns brass and you're evaluating Alec Peters, you go, hey, you know what, he still has it. He still has value that he can add to our club as a stretch four. And, um, and that's what you want to do. But again, taking advantage of the opportunity is the key in a way to utilize Summer League for yourself as a player. First Summer League for the Phoenix Suns under head coach Igor Kokoshkov. He coached this team to uh, what turned out to be a four and one record here. You heard Alex Peters say they were disappointed they couldn't advance and a two-point loss against the 76ers here yesterday, but a lot to feel good about as you head back to Phoenix. Well, yeah, you feel good about it. There's a lot that's happened here at the Summer League for Phoenix. Uh, number one, signing Devin Booker, which is, you know, which occurred during the past week here is a big, big key. And then you come out here and you look at this collection of young players that they now have, and you have to feel good about where you're heading into training camp. And perhaps they take that next step uh, into competing for a playoff spot in a legitimate way and you know I think the future is extremely bright for this franchise. That'll wrap it up for the uh, Phoenix Suns who win 90 to 55 here in Las Vegas. More coming up from Thomas and Mack. 
got more to come at the bottom of the hour. You'll see the Orlando Magic and the Oklahoma City Thunder. Stick with us. Lots more ahead from Las Vegas. When I was seven or eight, every day I would dribble around the block.